Well, here we are at the very expensive looking beaver suite. But the inhabitants today aren't beavers, it's a different kind of animal. It's the American heavy metal musician. And as you can see, there's evidence of hard drinking going on. Van Halen, I accuse you of drinking Perrier water. This no, is no, a no, very no. That's good yours, babe. Battle. That's yours there. I found it outside your luxury suite. It's even suite. shaped like you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you. I've always longed for a figure like that. Am I going to get a proper drink or what? What you, uh, what you drinking here? Is this an American beer? This is Budweiser. It's Budweiser. Well, let's, let's, let's try one. It's very nice. Yeah? Thank very you. Very nice. It is very nice. It's very nice. Okay, why don't you talk while we drink? <laughs> right. Well done. Mm. No, no. Later on today, Very good. at the uh, Castle Donington Monsters of Rock, you're going to be playing in front of, well, they're expecting 65,000 people. Don't you pain? <laughs> and you must do those kind of gigs. They must be the norm in the States, is that, is that correct? No, the average size venue in the United States is probably half the size of that. In fact, Van Halen's only really top billed a couple of giant shows like that, maybe three, four times in our career. Yep. Most of them are indoors. It's just the difference in the size venues that you have in Europe compared to the average size in the United States. How do you feel about going on stage before ACDC? Doesn't matter what time. We're taller. Know. Yeah. <laughs> but there's, there's, there's been there's been suggestions like in the build up to Donington that there's some kind of rivalry between you. And are you going out there to to blow them away? Is it no. a battle of the giants? It's not going to be a battle. There's not going to be any kind of uh, rivalry. Maybe in their minds, but in our minds, we are going to jump on stage and we're going to play our music and hopefully everybody will have a good time. I guess it's been suggested that this year's Donington is going to be a battle of the giants, a sort of monster metal showdown between you and uh, Van Halen. Is that how you see it? A month? What did I get? <laughs> I can't even spell that word. Um, is there that rivalry? Nah, not really. We just... Uh, it's a different thing. They're more of a, what would you say, pop band, I suppose. Yeah. Than what we are. We're more a rock and roll band. I think what's happening is there's liable to be a sense of competition at the Castle Donington Festival. It'll be more in the manner of who plays Edward Solo the best <laughs> and <laughs> ad infinitum. <laughs> Have you ever seen the kind of, you know what a drag race is? Yeah, sure. The cars with the big fat oh, tires on the, the back. <laughs> <laughs> and they got the little skinny tires in front. And every time they make a commercial for a drag race in the United States, the guy goes, makes it sound like you're going to a Monsters movie. He goes, 20, got him, 20 nitro fuel burning top screaming trash. You're going to rip your lungs out Friday. And every time they do, every time they do. Do you do much voiceover? Yeah, every time they do rock and roll concerts, they do the same kind of thing. I've noticed that around the world. They go, Monsters of Rock are gonna turn your head up and go on your neck, buddy. Yeah, that's right. Friday night, be there. Hey, you're not telling me you're nice, gentle lads, really, are you? No, I'm, what I'm <laughs> questioning is who comes up with those advertisements, the advert people or ACDC? No, I'm actually a very family oriented kind of guy. I've personally started three or four since January. <laughs> And welcome everybody to Trunk Nation. Live Monday through Friday, 3 to 5 Eastern, noon to 2 Pacific, Faction Talk, Sirius XM Channel 103, or on the Sirius XM app, live or on demand. Hope you're all having a good Tuesday on this 22nd day of August, 2023. All right, so just a few things that, you know, I wanted to throw by you, but the real interesting tidbit and piece of news that is making the rounds and again blew up my phone when i think it hit youtube on friday i think maybe saturday is a video of van halen from 1984 at the donnington festival at which at the time was known as monsters of rock performing an hour and roughly 15 minute set on a bill that day that was absolutely phenomenal. And Van Halen was not the headliner. Uh, Van Halen was always bigger in America than anywhere else in the world.
which they were a full-on arena headliner for already a while in the U.S. In the U.K., they did very well, but they still were not going to be over ACDC, who closed that day on the bill. But we all know that there is just such a scarcity of any Van Halen stuff anywhere ever coming out. And it's been maddening to us Van Halen fans because... We know there is a boatload of stuff in the quote-unquote vault or archives. But for whatever reason, for decades, it never comes out. It is squashed. It is, there's never bonus tracks. There's never anything. And there's a very little bit of Van Halen pro shot live video from any tour. We've had some leaks here and there. We've had some bootleg stuff. There's that early stuff from 78 that they synced up audio to. It's like a random 8-millimeter camera in the crowd. I think it was from Sacramento or something. There's just very, very little. Apparently, it exists, but it's just not ever really come out. And there have been rumors and rumblings, and I know uh, somebody who told me that they have come across the mother load of Van Halen home video or pro video that's never been seen. And that there is, they're trying to figure out a plan to roll this out. As we know, for whatever reason, the Van Halen camp is amazingly dysfunctional. We all know as we come up on three years since we lost Eddie, they still haven't, there's still been nothing as far as any sort of memorial tribute, whatever. And there probably won't be at this point. And, uh, you know, just, Whatever, everything just seems to get mucked up. It's only now that we're seeing the Sammy Hagar era records even getting remastered and re-released. And they're all well over 30 years old at this point, right? So anytime you get anything from Van Halen unexpectedly or not seen before, it is a major, major thing for rock fans. And 
this was indeed a major thing because it's Van Halen and it's something nobody has ever seen, which is pro shot video from their, I guess you could say co-headline performance, but they were really supporting ACDC. Now under them on the bill, there were a bunch of bands. Ozzy was just below them. And I guess that would have been the Jakey e. Lee era. Y and T was on, I think, underneath Ozzy. Y and T at that time did very well in England, better in England maybe than in America. Ex uh, Gary Moore was on the bill. Except was on the bill. This is all back in '84, and Motley Crue were first on that day because they hadn't really broken yet in America, in uh, UK. Again, it's 1984. It was a hell of a bill. But Van Halen was second from the top with ACDC closing. So this video, I don't know the origins of it. Somebody had said, I was looking through some stuff online, and somebody had said that apparently they were going to, they were shooting some of this footage with the intent of maybe turning it into another a, a music video, cutting it into a music video for another song from the 1984 album. And they just rolled on the entire concert which was, again, about an hour and 15 minutes long in that second slot, be, you know, just before the headliner. So if you've seen this, and if you haven't seen it, you can watch it whenever you want. It's on YouTube. If you punch in Van Halen in the search, it'll probably be the first thing that comes up because it's, it's brand new and it's getting a lot of hits. But I love the kind of, my favorite video is like the fly on the wall stuff. So what's so cool about this video is it's, First of all, from what I can tell, the entire thing is one camera. So it's not some multi-camera shoot. There's no camera out in the audience. It's one person with a camera on Michael Anthony's side of the stage. Now, of course, you would, in a perfect world, love like an eight-camera shoot and all these angles and edits and what have you. But in a way, this is almost cooler because it's very raw and it puts you right there on the stage with the band. And I'll tell you what, it reminded me, watching the video reminded me totally of having been to download, it's now called Download, but back then it was called Monsters of Rock. And it was one day and it was one stage. And that's what the origins of what, of the festival now known as Download is. So, so just for the timeline on that, what is now called the Download Festival and happens on these same grounds every June for three days in Donington, England. Previous used to be called the Monsters of Rock Festival and was one day and about eight bands or seven bands on, the same, on one stage. So I don't know when it was, probably 10, 15 years ago, they renamed it Download and they blew it out to like a three-day thing instead of a one-day, one-stage thing. But back then, again, it was called Monsters of Rock. And it, the video and the angle of it completely reminded me of the first time I went to that festival, which was three years later, in 1987, when Anthrax played in the middle of the bill. And at that time, I was working with Anthrax on the label and management side through Megaforce. So the first time I ever went to England was with Anthrax in 87 for their appearance at that same festival. And the reason why I say the video reminds me so much of what I did there is because when I got there and Anthrax were about to take the stage, Scott Ian had a video camera. Now, the video cameras in 1987 were like the size of a cinder block. <laughs> they were not small, light, compact things at all. But Scott, back in 87, had one. And it was like this big thing you had to sit on your shoulder. And he saw me standing in the wings of the stage just as Anthrax were about to go out and play. And he comes over to me and he says, Hey, uh, I got to take my video camera and just shoot the first song for me please all right so i take this thing i put it up on my shoulder and i start shooting the first song and the whole time he's motioning to me to shoot out to the audience because the audience is making a big mosh pit and i'm so i'm in the wings shooting out to the audience and shooting parallel to the band 
And I wanted to watch the show and take the whole thing in. And every time I went to take the, after they ended the song, and I went to take the camera off my shoulder, Scott would come running over to me during the show, and he'd be like, no, no, keep going. Film the next one. Film the next one. So I will never forget, I watched the entire Anthrax set in 1987 at Monsters of Rock in England through Scott Ian's viewfinder on his 1987 giant video camera. That footage that I shot of the whole set still exists. He still has it. So my point in saying that is this is similar in that it's one person with the camera in the wings of the stage and watching this guy shooting Van Halen and the way he worked the camera, I was like, yeah, I totally know that stage. I totally know what it's like to be in the wings of that stage and to shoot a band. Apparently, this guy was doing it for, uh, even though it was a single camera, a more professional outlet of some sort because there was a guy with the clapper board that, that comes on the screen every once in a while for time code and all of that. So they were clearly planning to edit it and use this for something what I don't know. But the video starts with the guys in Van Halen at the bottom of the stairs before they walk up to go on stage. And you see them mugging for the camera and talking a little bit and laughing and getting ready to go on. And I love that kind of stuff. I love that kind of like fly on the wall backstage stuff. So they're doing all that. And then you, the, the camera follows him. The guy had total access. The band comes out and they play. And the whole show is just, again, this one camera from the wings from Michael Anthony's side. And the audio is pretty good. At times you hear the guy talking over it a little bit. But outside of that, the audio is pretty good. And the video is great. I mean, again, it's single camera, but it really puts you there as, to, as opposed to being this professionally quick edited thing. A few observations about watching this. I'm just, I'm just going to be totally honest here. My criticism of Van Halen during the Roth era was that there were, at least for live, was that there were way too many solos and way too much nonsense between songs. And it shows in this video. Because there's a drum solo, I think, after like the second song. There is a wild Michael Anthony bass solo. You know how I feel about Michael. He's one of my favorite people in the world, and he's a friend. But, but he's out of his mind in this thing. <laughs> he is throwing the bass. He is jumping off the riser, landing on the bass. He is humping the bass. He is pushing the bass against his amps. So that's a whole thing. The breakdown and everybody wants some, Roth talks forever. Roth is rolling around on the ground and doing all these gyrations. There is this platform. I still can't figure out what this is. But un just in front of the drum riser, there are these two squares that I, I can't really tell from the video. I guess it's um, it might be some sort of cushioned landing pad. So that if they jumped off, as Roth does a lot, off the front of the drum riser, his, his landing is a little softer. It didn't look at all like it was soft. It looked like, like a giant frame just sitting there. The other thing I thought about what it was, was much later, David Lee Roth used a, if you saw Van Halen on like the last couple tours, he had this like platform where he would do dance moves and the, the thing allowed him to slide. But I don't think it was that. I think it was just like, it was like this framed out little landing spot in front of the drum riser. I'm assuming it was some sort of cushioning. As far as solos are concerned, especially when it comes to Van Halen, I think you, re I mean, you really only needed one. And of course, that would be Eddie Van Halen. I mean, Alex is great. Michael is great. But all, and I remember when I was a kid going to see Van Halen. Whether it was the Fair Warning Tour, 1984 Tour, whatever it was, Diver Down Tour. There was so much shit like that going on during the show. Where Roth would just stand there and talk and talk to the crowd and r ramble. And the end, like a solo, like two songs in or whatever. You'd be like, all I could think about is I could be hearing five more Van Halen songs right now. Most Van Halen songs are like three and a half minutes long. 
some of these breakdowns are like 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, that could be four more songs. The other thing that's interesting, again, these are just observations having watched this thing. If you've watched it, you know, you probably have your own thoughts. You're, you're welcome to call in on it. If you haven't watched it, the beauty is it, as long as it's still there, it's free on YouTube. You could watch it whenever you want. The other thing is there are uh, people are throwing shit at the band. The first, especially the first couple songs. There's a point where David Lee Roth yells at the crowd and says, hey, man, don't be throwing shit up here. If you throw shit up, I saw who threw that bottle. I'm going to come down there and fuck your girlfriend and all the, you know, all the David Lee Roth stuff, right? But in England, that's a thing, at least it was then, where people threw shit on, up at the stage, including bottles of piss, which, believe it or not, was viewed as a term of endearment, like a, a thing where they were giving you props. That did not always fly with bands, as you would imagine, even if it was considered to be a, a positive thing. I couldn't tell what, but people were throwing shit up there. The other thing is, for a festival that I think capped out at 35,000 people back then, security had their hands full because there's no shortage of people that run on stage during Van Halen's set. There's probably somewhere between seven to 10 people that apparently easily get up right onto that stage and run around while the band is playing and have to be wrestled off the stage. So I was really surprised. You know, I know times were different in 84, but how, how much of that was, was happening. The other thing about it that I had no idea ever in Van Halen history until I saw it is as the band is playing, I saw a keyboard set up on Eddie Van Halen's side of the stage, but I also saw one on Michael Anthony's side of the stage. And I'm like, why would they have two keyboard rigs? I mean, in case Eddie decides he wants to play from one side or the other, I mean, of the state, like, why would they do that? And obviously the two songs at that time, keyboards were new to Van Halen, and the two songs to feature keys in the set that they played were Jump and I'll Wait. Michael Anthony played keyboards. I never knew that ever. Now, I might just... You guys might be like, what are you talking about? How do you not know that? I never in my life, and I went to see Van Halen many times with Roth and Sammy and Gary, and I never, to my recollection, saw Michael Anthony play keyboards, ever. In, in Jump and in I'll Wait, there are moments in both of those songs live where Michael and Eddie are playing keyboards together on their individual keyboards. So Michael Anthony is playing like a keyboard part and like his bass on the keyboards. And Eddie's playing keyboards. So there's literally portions of both of those songs where there is no guitar and no actual bass beyond what is being recreated on the keyboard. Never saw that before in my life. Never even knew Van Halen ever did anything like that. Never knew Michael Anthony played keyboards live. Never. Blew my mind. She actually had Van Halen at a British massive festival for portions of two songs where there wasn't bass or there wasn't bass or guitar being played. Crazy. You know, Alex Van Halen plays his ass off. Michael Anthony is just shot out of a cannon running around the stage, playing great, by the way, during the songs. I mean, you watch this thing, you really realize what a secret weapon and super important person to the Van Halen sound that Michael Anthony was and still is. From his playing to his performance and, of course, his vocal. Um, speaking of vocal... And again, I'm not I'm not trying to get on Roth here. Roth is Roth. We know his the 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 pros and cons of Roth. We know the showman and all of that. But again, it's to me it's it's way much and way over the top. I, I'll be honest. I thought as much as I love Michael, I thought his bass solo in this thing was a little over the top too. 
But Roth, it's it's you know you know what's like I we I always knew Roth could not sing live. It, it always made me laugh when people would see David Lee Roth on more recent tours, including the last one he did. They're like, oh my God, his voice, his voice. And my point about which always blew me away when people would say that is. If you think Roth doesn't sing well live now, you clearly never saw Van Halen back in the day because he always sang like that. He could never sing well live and never did ever. There's all these people like when Roth did his last thing at the House of Blues and the last time he went out and did rock, people were like, or, and even the last Van Halen tour or two that he did. Uh, David Lee Roth, man, he can't sing, he can't sing. I'm like, people said, I, it used to make me nuts. I, if you listened to me during that time, I was like, what rock have you been under? That has always been him live. He has always been more a showman than he's ever been a singer on the live stage. And he never got killed for it back then. He got killed for it on recent Van Halen tours and solo tours, but he never took hits for it back then. And I never understood why. But I think because the persona and the larger than life thing transcended it. People just got so caught up in the electricity of Van Halen Live. And of course, you know, seeing one of the greatest guitarists who ever lived up there doing what he does. I think people just looked past the fact that, yeah, they had a great showman, but this guy's singing every word or every other word, I should say. Like Vince Neal gets crucified for that, even still now, obviously. David Lee Roth never got beat up on that. Because, I, again, I think the showmanship just and, and the strength of the songs just people just didn't, you know, acknowledge it or want to talk about it or just tuned it out. The other observation is the crowd. When you watch the crowd, all GA, 35, 40,000 people pushing to the front of the stage, swaying around. The, the thing that hit me about that was what would happen a couple years later, the year I was there, when an unknown, a new band called Guns N' Roses opened that festival and two people were tragically killed because of all the pushing down front and the grounds were wet and they basically were squashed in the mud. Tragedy happened on that field three years after this concert because of all the pushing and pressure up front of people pushing against the stage. And just what there are, there's a lot of crowd shots. The guy with the camera pans out to the crowd a few times. And to me, seeing that and knowing what was going to happen in three years, it's a harbinger of what was to come and the tragedy that was to come. The set list was, uh, again, it could have used like five more songs, but it's, it had a little bit of everything. On, they did On Fire. They did Little Guitars. They did I'll Wait. They did Jump. They did Hot for Teacher. They did Running with the Devil. I'm trying to remember what else was in there. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, overall observations, Roth being Roth, what I always you know, knew what Roth was and had seen it for myself, Michael Anthony just killing and uh, out of his mind on stage. As usual, way too many solos, way too much stuff between songs when we could have gotten a million more songs. The dual keys thing blew my mind with Michael and Eddie. The lack of security with people running on the stage. And um, the final thing is, as, as rough as some of it may have sounded in some spots, just the rawness of it. That thank God Van Halen was never that band that pumped in tracks and played to tapes and any of that shit. It's just so raw and so real in that regard, which is what a real rock, live rock show is supposed to be, for warts and all. And then the final thing on this is... I talked about how they come up onto the stage together and you see them come up the steps. I was super, super psyched to see that the camera follows them off the stage. 
and goes into their trailers with them. Now, there's no audio of that, but there is video. And what I was looking for, knowing what the rest of the bill was that day, is wondering if, like, the ACDC guys were hanging around Van Halen's area, if Gary Moore was, if Dave Menachetti was, if Ozzy was. I mean, it's Van Halen. It's Eddie Van Halen. I mean, you would think every musician on that bill that day, if they didn't have to leave the compound, would have been watching from the wings or at least buzzing around the Van Halen camp. I didn't see anybody who else was on, who else, who was on the bill that day in the video. But I did see a very a, a much younger Neil Sean who was hanging out and just having a drink and a cigarette hanging out in the Van Halen compound. And I believe what was John Entwistle from The Who. I'm pretty sure it was him. And the two of them are there just hanging out with Van Halen after the show. Again, there's no audio, but you do see the guy signing autographs and talking and having a beer and all of that. It's extremely cool. Uh, again, for whatever deficiencies and nitpicking this, just to have something like this when we have so little from the Van Halen archives to finally get something dropped on us is amazing. Now, the origins of this, why it's coming out, again, the Internet will have at that with the various stories and what have you. Uh, but this could be the tip of the iceberg, and we could be getting a mother load of Van Halen stuff maybe coming down the pike. If you recall, in the last year or so, there has been a ton of stuff leaked from KISS that we've never seen. And there's a million stories and chatter as to what that was about and where that came from. Much of it has been pulled down, unfortunately. But the word I had heard was the same thing was going to happen with Van Halen, and we just got our first taste with this 1984 show from England. And uh, again, I, was watch I watched it last night. I was up till like 2 in the morning watching it. And then, of course, YouTube being YouTube, the thing ends, and I'm like, oh, I want to watch the, uh, the new, I want to check out the new Rival Sun song, because they made like a, yeah, like a lyric video, not a real video, but like a lyric video for the new song. So I pull that up, and I hit it, and of course, that takes me into like five other Rival Sons videos, and before I knew it, it's like three o'clock in the morning, and I'm, I just watched 10 Rival Sons clips. Uh, and when all I wanted to do was watch this hour Van Allen concert, those, those algorithms will get you every time. So if you, ha if you saw this thing and you have comments on it, feel free to call in with your thoughts. If you didn't see it, I'm sure you'll want to see it now. And, uh, oh, so Joel, you're telling me somebody called in and said it's been taken down already. Yeah, and I actually uh, did a little digging. I did find it again, and there's actually a number of articles about it. It was pulled down, uh, but it was also reposted. So uh, for people like, you know, basically I was getting a number of calls from people who said that their friends sent them links and that the links weren't working anymore and that the video had been pulled. Well, for all those people who are still just Google it again or, you know, search it on YouTube, uh, it is there. It has been reposted. It might be by a different poster than the original one, but it is back up now. Yeah. The original person that posted it, they all use aliases. It was something, it was something to do with, um, I forget what it was, but it was, it was a lyric from a Van Halen song. Now I'm looking, yeah, I see it right now. It's now, there's now a version of it posted by a YouTube user by the, going by the name of Scramic, S-C-R-A-M-I-C-K. I'm, I'm literally looking at it as we speak. And, yeah, and that's, that's what happens. That I found. Yeah, and that's what happens with this stuff. It gets... For whatever reason, it gets flagged, whether it's the band, the management, the label, whoever actually really owns it. You don't know the circumstances on why it's been posted, whatever the case may be. So it gets pulled down. People capture it somehow, repost it. So it's back there now. As of 23 hours ago, it's been reposted. Yeah, you see Valerie Bertinelli's there. She's walking up to the stage. The other wives or girlfriends are all there in the wings of the stage. It's so friggin' cool. I mean, it takes you back 40 years. And during the show, they say uh, 
David Lee Roth says to the crowd for the first time, Van Halen is back in England for the first time in five years. So they played there on the first album for, in 78. And then I guess they didn't go back until 84 when they were, of course, a huge band. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it as I'm talking to you again. It's just so friggin' cool. And don't get me wrong when, I, when I'm, you know, what I'm saying about Roth. Roth was the perfect guy for Van Halen. Roth was perfect for those records. I, I'm not in any way diminishing the importance of Roth, but live, to me, he could be irritating because it was just so much about, you know, his bravado and all of that stuff, posturing that he did, that I would have preferred a few more songs and I would have I did not. I don't need a drum solo as great as Alex is. I don't need a bass solo as great as Michael Anthony is. I get you got to give ten minutes to Eddie Van Halen. He's Eddie Van Halen. But outside of that, I would have loved seven more songs in every Van Halen show I ever saw, including this one. It used to make me nuts. Roth would come out and swing a sword and dance and do all this stuff. You're like, oh my god. But regardless, this is just gold for any rock fan, any Van Halen fan, and we'll see we'll see if this becomes a thing like the KISS video drops, where just more and more will keep coming, and you're going to have to grab them and watch them because eventually whoever owns these or shot these or the circumstances for these going up, especially when it gets that much traction, and I just spent a half an hour talking about it on a national radio show, more people are going to be looking at it now. Eventually, whatever legalities exist with this thing, they might get flagged. They might get pulled down. So try to watch it when you can. All right, let's. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's the story for me coming off the weekend.